I'm Ariel Gordon, here from Channel 32 DC News. Today we're just going to be discussing how politics, education, and society in the 21st century affect our racial views. Religion, history, and the conservative organizations are all being questioned on their beliefs concerning race. So, we, here at Defiance College, went to the streets to find out what people's opinions are. My name is Stephanie Morgan, and I am here today with Mason to ask him a question about race and education. Where does the idea of race come from, Mason? Uh, I would have to say society. Society, that is a very good answer. I'm Terrence Palmer here, standing next to Donald Trump in New York City. Um, so we're going to ask Donald Trump, what does race mean to him? What does race mean to him? Well, thank you very much, Terrence, for coming to the Trump Towers to interview me. I think that race is a very amazing thing, how we have evolved over generations. Working at a liberal arts college in beautiful Defiance, Ohio, I have learned that diversity is what makes the world progress. And teaching our children to love and embrace difference in culturals in anything that is that God has made, I believe is the way that we need to be teaching our young ones how to think. And in time, hopefully, Terrence, that the whole world will believe that human nature means everyone, not just one, one particular sect of what God has created. We are one. Am I right? Right. Good. You're not fired. <laughs> Thank you, Terrence, very much. Appreciate it. Hi, I'm Des Clemens, and I'm here with Joe DeLong, and I'm a sports medicine major. And his question today about race and education is, how do you perceive people of a different race? I really tend not to see color because I think they're just like, I mean, depending on the color of the person, it's just like their personality is not going to be any different. Uh, there's a lot of stereotypes that people go by, whether white people think they know everything or they're, I guess they're uh, smarter or along with Asians, uh, whether it's uh, black people with baggy jeans and a do-rag or in a gang and do drugs and Mexicans, um, kind of the same stereotype. Uh, but I went to a high school that had zero black people and now I live in the same house with two black people and I really see no change. Um, maybe there's some personality difference, but um, in an overall aspect, um, that's how I perceive them, just like everybody else. Okay, thank you. Hi, it's Bethany again, and I'm here at the McCann desk with Kaylee, and she's going to answer a question about race and education. Kaylee, instead of race, how could we categorize people? Um, I don't think we should categorize people at all, because everyone's their own person. Nobody's exactly the same as anybody else. So why should race have anything to do with it? Hmm, very interesting. Thank you, Kaylee. I'm sitting here with the wonderful Miss Coleman, and I wanted to ask her, <laughs> what does race mean to you? Okay, I think that race is a concept that society has somehow created in order to distinguish people um, basically on the color of their skin. Okay, but a skin color, is, to me, is just a skin color. Um, I know it's a question that you see on a lot of applications where they will ask, are you Caucasian, are you African American, are you Hispanic, you know, and they define that as race, but, you know, I think if we're going to use the word race anyway, it's just a way to kind of define a part of a culture more than anything. Um, so I, I guess that's how I think of it. Um, I know that they keep a lot of statistics on it in different areas for a lot of different reasons. I'm not quite sure what those reasons may be, if it has to do with uh, federal law or any kind of funding of different projects, you know, and all that kind of thing. But when I think of race, you know, that's what I think of, a man-made concept that somehow allowed us to talk about people who may be different from we are in terms of what we look like, I guess. And by we, I mean you or, you know, because you might refer to me as a white person, I might refer to you as a black person, but th it just gives us a way to talk about it, I think. You know, that would be my first first um, thought, my first reaction to that question. Okay, thank okay. you, Ms. Coleman. You're welcome. And that's a wrap on Channel 32 News. Thank you. Okay.
I'm Dennis Clemens, and I'm outside of Schaumburg with Olivia. And Olivia, your question today is, should the census or educational documents such as IEPs be categorized based on race? Um, I definitely don't think so because, I mean, I think that poverty levels are something that can be looked at, like the income brackets of each of the people because, I mean, whether you want to admit it or not, background, economic background sometimes can affect a child's learning level, but I definitely don't think race plays a factor in that. Okay, thank you. Here on the phone we have a Miss Mercedes Clay. Mercedes, do you think they discriminate in schools uh, against students based on their race? The way our educational system is is set up um, with the issue of levies and and schools not having what they need, I think some schools in mostly large urban areas because of um, the lack of funding coming into the schools is more of a of an issue that students don't have exactly what they need and are very prepared to pass the standardized testing um, and not necessarily being discriminated against because I think if you if you if all the schools were on equal footing getting all the equal amount of budgeting having all the same resources available to them having the same size classrooms and teachers with the same amount of education, I think there wouldn't be an issue of discrimination. It'd just be an issue of what the student is doing to improve their own education. Um, so I think the issue isn't against, isn't the government discriminating. I think it's an issue of our school systems, our secondary and elementary school systems are not be, are, aren't on an equal footing resource wise, money wise, um, that our students who happen to be minority students usually in those schools don't get everything they need to be successful on the standardized tests. I'm standing here with Quincy Newton and I just want to know Quincy, is it fair that they discriminate in the classroom? Uh, no it isn't fair. It's never fair to discriminate against anyone, especially in the classroom, because everybody was born with a brain everybody has the power to use their brain the way that they want to. So no, I do not feel like it's fair to discriminate against anyone, anywhere, especially on the platform. That's a wrap for Channel 32 DC News. Hi, my name is Bethany Morgan and I'm here with Gary today and I'm going to ask him a question about race and education. Gary, what impact, if any, has race had on your education? Um, well, in response to your question, I think that uh, personally, um, I feel like it's made me work harder because people have stereotypes about different ethnicities, um, you know, black, white, you know, Chinese, whatever, um, and um, I would say the stereotype towards, you know, blacks in education um, is that, you know, some of them stop at high school, but um, I personally like to overcome that stereotype and, and, you know, I'm here pursuing my master's degree now, so makes me work harder. All right, thank you very much, Gary. I'm Dennis Clemens, I'm here with President Gordon in Defiance Hall. President Gordon, how does race affect politics? Of course, that's a pretty difficult question, and historically, we've certainly seen it have a really significant impact, right? If you look all the way back to the, of course, before the Civil War, and then uh, after, there are lots of uh, voting patterns and things that uh, have been analyzed you know, based on uh, uh, race, based on either the race of the candidate uh, or the race of the voters. Uh, if you look actually, you know, my background is in constitutional law and law. Uh, actually, there are a whole series of Supreme Court decisions uh, that have dealt with the extent to which it's permissible or not permissible to take uh, race into account and things like redistricting and uh, things like that. Of course, it was a major issue in the 1960s, right, 50s and 60s, uh, and led to the all-important uh, passage of the Civil Rights Act and then the Voting Rights Act, uh, which had a major change on our uh, uh, society. And of course, we're seeing those uh, changes continue uh, uh, up to today, right? And, uh, of course, uh, history was made in 2008 when Obama was, uh, uh, was elected, and that was certainly a significant step in terms of uh, uh, our development as, as a country uh, uh, in that regard. And I think we see it uh, as well when, you know, in the whole debate today on uh, 
uh, immigration and things like that. So I think it has certainly been a uh, pretty significant uh, force uh, in politics uh, throughout. Uh Hi, Ariel. I'm here with Jake, and um, we have a few questions for Jake. Jake, you can raise social or biological? Well, it can't get biological because everyone's saying it has to be social because white men from Europe thought they were better than everyone else. That's why everything was created. Thank you, Jake. Well, as you heard, seen and heard, the students and faculty here at Defiance College have strong opinions on race and education. So we learned that race does not bring people together. It divides them. Race does not promote learning. It only leaves students behind. Race does not exist to better society. Culture does. So therefore, we should not teach or use race in education systems because Lear using race only leads to other races thinking that they're superior to one another. The only way to solve this problem is to teach curriculum that will bring all the cultures together. It only divides us. I just said that. <laughs> <laughs> Race does not exist for the betterment of society. Culture does. No. Can you start that over? I'm Dennis Clemens, and I'm here with Style. I don't know his name. What's your name? Jared. Jared. Okay. <laughs> 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 the camera. <laughs> Is it going right now? <laughs> Yeah, it's going. Yeah, it's going right now. That's awesome. <laughs> That's a blooper. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Bethany Morgan. I'm here today with Mason. And I'm going to ask you a question about race and education. <laughs> I'm I can't do it, guys. <laughs> Where does the... <laughs> Are you it's the first, you're the first person. Then. I'm sorry. You're the first person. Schools should not teach race or use race or any of that stuff because that only leads to blah blah I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Stop it. We have here on the phone with us Ms. Mercedes Clay. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's actually the question is is do I think it's fair that the government discriminates against mm -hmm. um, minorities in education? I guess it's a question of Well, as you've seen and heard, the students here at Defiance College. You can just. I can't just. I can't, I can't, can't, just, just, I can't just, just because it won't be like flowy. It'll uh, be like weird. So. So stop the video. <laughs> so. Well, it looks like it And now on to Professor Francis with the weather. <laughs>